everyone, today I'm bringing you another video essay on a topic that I have been super interested in ever since I encountered it. I'm going to try to not be as tensed up and clenched up while recording because it's honestly not that fun to be so nervous when I'm doing this. And this is in school so I can chill, I'm not being graded. Today we'll be talking about the Lolita concept or Lolita syndrome and how K-pop has indulged in this creepy stereotype several times throughout the years. Huge disclaimer, I understand that this issue is very sensitive and may be uncomfortable for some people, so if you want to skip on this video, I completely understand. Don't worry, I won't be mentioning anything explicit or graphic in any way, but Lolita does have themes of pedophilia and sexualization of young girls, so I thought I'd let you know. But this is an immensely important topic to be aware of and educate yourself on, so hopefully my video can help out a bit. And for K-pop fans who may tend to act before they think, please understand that this video is not an attack on any idols or K-pop in general. I'm also a fan. This is just to point out how a subculture can arrive and thrive from a problematic source. So if you want to leave a hate comment, you might as well watch the entire video to see if your hate is even valid. Lolita, if you don't know, arrives from the novel of the same name by Vladimir Nabokov in 1955. The novel is an interesting read as it deals with heavy subjects such as pedophilia, but presents it in a unique perspective through a flawed narrator, or what's more commonly referred to as an unreliable narrator. Basically, long story short, literally, the book follows Humbert. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but honestly, I hate him so much, does it even matter? Hey. Bitch, you better be joking. In the book, the events that take place are shown from his perspective. That's very important to note. He starts off recounting his dented love life, blah blah blah. Humbert is a creep. Nah, I ain't never been with a buddy, with a buddy. She Shut your bitch ass! Basically, as a young boy, he falls in love with someone who dies very young, like when she was only 14. And since then, he garners an attraction for little girls. He then meets Lolita, or Dolores, which is actually her name, when he rents out a room in her mom's house. He calls Dolores Lolita lovingly, gross am I right? And he refers to girls like her as nymphettes. Sure, it's not your fault for gawking at a nymphette. It's her fault for being sexually promiscuous at 12, right? When I tell you I hate this man, but whatever, he wouldn't like me either since I'm above the legal age. Anyway, the story is basically about how he engages in a Shashar relationship with this child, scarring her forever and telling himself that it's because she wanted him too. Look, I'd love to tell you the entire story, but for the purpose of this video, I just wanted to make it clear what Lolita is and where it comes from. Since the release of the book and several often not accurate film adaptations, Lolita has split and slithered into several different fields from psychology to fashion and entertainment. Huge note, I am talking about K-pop here, yes, because I have a K-pop channel, but that doesn't mean Lolita concepts aren't present in different entertainment industries. Several singers have taken inspirations and portrayed this problematic premise, sometimes to criticize it, and other times for aesthetic. There is a possibility that Lolita may be misrepresented in the Asian entertainment industry, as the beauty standard for women there also includes cuteness as opposed to just sexy and mature here in the West. But sometimes the line between cute and desirable seems to blend and create something that is unsettling to witness. This is usually to cater to the uncle fans demographic. We'll get to that later in the video. I will say I am not really qualified to definitively say what in K-pop is Lolita and what is just cute. But I'll try to stick to what most K-pop fans consider Lolita and try to apply my knowledge based on the book and a few articles that I've read about the Lolita complex. So what do you look for exactly to determine if something is Lolita? Clothing, most often childish in aesthetic and size. Second, a depiction of kid-like innocence, most often seen with facial expressions or props, like toys, milk bottles, etc. And lastly, portrayal of sexuality, usually through suggestive poses. I am also including references to the film, as some artists have alluded to the film's aesthetic. 
But as a whole, it can get tricky to identify what's Lolita and what's not. It isn't exactly black and white. I mean, it's okay to be cute and sexy, but the type of cute should be considered. This cute and this cute is definitely different, wouldn't you say? A brief reminder that there is a difference between Lolita concepts and underage idols doing sexy concepts. I have already talked about the latter in another video of mine, but today we'll be focusing on Lolita. So, one example that I can confidently say has a Lolita theme to it are these concept photos from the group Stellar. These were heavily criticized by the general public, but as you can see, the clothes and innocent expressions paired with the suggestive poses give you a concerning look into how Lolita can be seen as unsettling. You can clearly see what they were going for, basically blending childishness and sexiness, which should never happen. Are you ready for this? Since I'm them. Also, a good thing to remember is that I'm not blaming the idols that are forced into this concept, because we all know it's not their choice. However, I am blaming this on whoever it was that thought Lolita concepts were okay. Let me tell you, y'all are not seeing heaven. I would like to say Korean netizens are very quick to cancel these concepts and protect idols and kids from sexualization, which gives me a lot of hope and it is probably the main reason why Lolita concepts are not a huge thing in K-pop anymore. Actually, scratch that, there is a very recent example from a huge group, so hopefully that doesn't set any trends. We'll talk about that soon, but before that, Another artist who has been heavily criticized for blending sexuality and childhood innocence in her lyrics and music videos is IU. Some of her images are even said to be direct references to Lolita's film adaptation. What do you think? Personally, I understand that idols like IU, who debut at a very young age, may look for a way to represent that weird phase of I'm a child but I'm also working overtime. You know, that weird in-between of not a child, not yet a woman. But when it is connected to sexual motifs, the comparison between these two age groups can seem problematic. And going through some of the wordings in her lyrics and her music videos, I can definitely see the issue. And I'm saying this as a huge IU stan, but when I saw the evidence laid out by netizens, it was hard to deny. And as much as I love IU, I need her to know that this isn't okay. Lolita is not an aesthetic. These kinds of mistakes can happen if people don't stop to actually understand what Lolita is about. I'm sure IU and the people around her who participated in these concepts had no ill intentions. But their lack of knowledge about the novel led to them recreating a problematic premise. The reason I'm bringing IU up as an example is to show that even an artist who is so famous, respected, and loved can sometimes misunderstand what Lolita actually is. It isn't a representation of young love, it is pedophilia. It is a young girl being abused. Let's not romanticize it. There are tons of books and media about young love that isn't creepy, so let's use those for inspiration next time. Other examples that have been accused of this include Ice Cream Cake by Red Velvet. The song and music video carry a childish to an almost scary feel while the lyrics are obviously hinting at something else entirely. Ice Cream Cake with 15-year-old Yeri is inappropriate if the lyrics do mean what they imply. And if it's as some's lyrics we're questioning. Okay. Bye. And again, a lot of you already know, but Red Velvet are my favorite girl group. And I'm not blaming the girls here, but this premise is dodgy and it needs to be called out. Ice Cream Cake is definitely a song full of sexual or at least somewhat suggestive innuendos. That's pretty clear, but to pair that with a cute, almost childlike theme with Yeri being only 15 is crazy, and SM has been called out for this. But the second example, which is much more recent and much clearer, seems to have been ignored by a lot of people. Ice cream. Blinks, hear me out. I'm not blaming the girls, but the concept and the people who came up with it. While being formed by fully adult women, Ice Cream is said to have a Lolita-like concept due to the obviously sexual lyrics, come on, who are we kidding? 
paired with symbols in the music video like the ice cream truck, slides, bouncy house, toy cars, bicycles with training wheels, balloons, ball pit, and of course the iconic Lily the heart shaped glasses. The entire aesthetic of the music video screams CHILD except for a few sudden sexy scenes and along with the sexual lyrics that makes for one very unsettling music video. Don't get me wrong. Blackpink are grown women who can be as sexy as they want to and sing songs about whatever they want, but to pair their most sexy song with the most childish theme is just a weird idea. Who thinks, hmm, sexy lyrics, let's set up a playground. Now guess where you going? To jail. You going to jail, bitch? This is again problematic considering this is one of the most recent examples of Lolita in K-pop. But it's important to know that while calling out Lolita concepts is important, labeling everything Lolita will only make people misunderstand and devalue the concept. Like some people accuse Red Velvet's Russian Roulette and Blackpink's As If It's Your Last as Lolita 2. But unlike the other two songs, I find these songs to have no Lolita themes in the slightest. For Russian Roulette, just because something has a young feel to it or has that kick of childhood nostalgia, it doesn't really make it Lolita. Even if adults have a cartoonish theme, as long as it does not carry any sexual connotations, it's completely fine. In Russian Roulette, there are two juxtaposing themes of cartoons and childhood themes cut with horror. This is not Lolita, nor is it a harmful concept. It just satirically builds upon the extreme violence in kids' cartoons and how they are shown to be whimsically comedic. Red Velvet here show the actual horror tone more clearly, thus making for a really fun and interesting music video. For As If It's Your Last, I know the music video has school uniforms, candies, and toys, but they don't really carry a sexual connotation. They're most likely pointing to a high school type relationship and the candies and toys refer to memories from that relationship, most likely through carnival days or something similar. I hope now you can understand the difference between what's Lolita and what's not Lolita. By the way, if you are finding this video informative or entertaining so far, please like and subscribe. This video took a lot of effort and research, so I would really appreciate it. A very prominent subgenre of these Lolita concepts could sometimes be schoolgirl concepts. Some of them can be seen as being right on the line of Lolita. While usually associated with tween or even baby-like symbols, Lolita is broadly attached to anyone underage, and schoolgirls are for the most part underage. But as we know, schoolgirl concepts are a huge part of K-pop. Thank god though, most seem to be either savage or cute, but unfortunately songs like Hello Venus's Sticky Sticky is not one of those. Very obviously sexualizing a school uniform and adding to the creepy schoolgirl fetish is again, very creepy. Girls Day Twinkle Twinkle is also heavily criticized for using school uniforms to portray an inappropriate message. And it's very important for me to express that I have nothing against adult women expressing their sexuality. I feel like that is completely your choice. If you are comfortable and want to show skin, be sexy or sing about adult topics, you do you, girl. I have no problem with you expressing your sexuality as an adult. But please do not in any way associate it with young kids as it just feeds into the Lolita concept and it's kind of fucking creepy. And now you must be thinking, if it's this problematic, why do these Lolita concepts even exist? Well, these are usually created for a certain demographic that is usually referred to as uncle fans. Yay, we're back to this again. Aww. This fan group, consisting of mostly middle-aged men, tend to enjoy Lolita concepts. Not all of them, of course, just the creepy ones, but not to age shame or gender shame or whatever, but a similar demographic also tend to enjoy manga with related themes. Thus, we see a similar theme of Lolita in anime and manga as well. So, why is this preference different from, I don't know, some of us preferring girl crush and others preferring cute concepts? Well, because these concepts do not feed into a demented image of children being sexualized. Look, I honestly have no issues with anyone's taste. I like mayonnaise, so trust me, I'm no one to judge. But judge I shall if y'all keep acting like creepy criminals. Stop, make it pop. DJ, blow my speakers up. Too 
Like 25 year old women having to speak in Aegyo the entire time while not really being dressed Aegyo at all, if you know what I mean. But I know that these idols are told to engage with their audience. They are coached to do what gets them more fans, more publicity. And it sucks because not only are they the faces for promoting this creepy complex, but they also have to endure the creepiness without having much of a choice in the matter. Or being oblivious to what they're actually being asked to do. Twice are a huge example of this. You can see their fandom switch from mostly middle-aged men to young people, mostly girls, as their concept shifted from cute to more mature to fit their ages. I think this shows a lot about this specific demographic. Thankfully, I believe we've left the bulk of this Lolita complex back in second generation K-pop with idols like IU, Girls' Generation, and Sully being accused of it the most. I didn't really mention Sully as I do not mean to disrespect her or her legacy in any way and instead used other idols to essentially explain the same idea anyway. With third gen, we saw cute concepts turn from baby-like to fresh and soft, more fitting for these teenage to adult idols. And with fourth gen, Lolita concepts have become more or less a dreaded past memory. Can we please keep it that way? As a conclusion, the lines or limits of the Lolita concept aren't exact and not etched in stone. There isn't really a clear way to concretely distinguish what's Lolita and what's not, especially when it comes to K-pop. Is cute Lolita? Well, of course not. Cute and sexy, perhaps? Maybe, but it depends on how it's portrayed. Basically, it's very conditional. There will always be someone who might find something Lolita while you don't. But as we progress, I hope we all get a better understanding of this issue in regards to pop culture, especially K-pop, and understand that this is not an issue being used to witch hunt idols or to bring them hate, but a genuine concern over the misunderstanding of a tragic topic. A topic that is so often misconstrued as an aesthetic or romanticized. Please be weary that Lolita is not a love story. It is a story about a young and helpless victim and the abuser who spends the entire book justifying his crime. That is all for this video. I hope you don't misunderstand my intentions with this topic as it is a sensitive matter and I try to deal with it as delicately as I could while still establishing a firm point. Again, this is not something to use as ammunition to hate on idols, but instead to critique and educate the companies and the industry as they are the ones who choose to feed into this deranged complex. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Also, comment below to boost this video up. I would love to know if you want me to cover similar topics, and if so, do you have any in mind? Also, let's get this topic out there. Share this video with your friends if you can. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you next time.